All right, today is Tuesday, which means that's time for another live Q&A all about eBay, Amazon, and Facebook Marketplace dropshipping. As always, I'm your host, Paul J. Lipsky. So this is a pretty casual hour where I just stand around here and answer any questions that you guys have in the live chat. So if you're not here live, make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification so you get alerted when I do go live so that you can then jump in here and ask your question. But I always go live every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Central Time. Right now, I am in Texas because we travel around the country full time in a camper van. So let me know where in the world you are chiming in from. Then jump in that chat and ask me any questions that you guys have. I'll do my best to answer as many of them as I can. And if I do look a little bit red in the face because I got pretty sunburnt the other day, we were in the cold weather for a while, like most of the country. Finally got to a warm spot in Destin, Florida, and just spent way too much time out in the sun, one wheeling around, and got pretty burnt doing it. So that's why I'm a little red in the face. But hey, let's see who's here. Let's see what questions you guys have. And if you guys wouldn't mind, I would also appreciate if you gave the video a little thumbs up. Hey, what's up, Rise? Um... When starting eBay dropshipping, what advice would you give as you needed them, but no one gave? Not quite sure what you mean by that, uh, Rinaldus. Maybe you can clarify your question a little bit. Um, Antoine says, my Walmart Plus membership got terminated for being a reseller. Yeah, unfortunately, this is something that's been happening to uh, a bunch of bigger sellers over the past like month or so. So when I first reviewed Walmart Plus, Oh, let me back back up. If you don't know what Walmart Plus is, Walmart Plus is very similar to Amazon Prime. So anyone can jump onto Walmart and, and start buying products. It's free to have an account there. So we've been using Walmart for years to drop ship from. Walmart just came out with Walmart Plus a few months ago, maybe like right before the holidays. And we immediately, when we heard about it, we're a little bit skeptical of it. So it promised to have free shipping on all items. Now, normally Walmart has free shippings on all orders over $35. So it was pretty cool that we would then save $5.99 for all the items under $35 with free shipping. But I was kind of skeptical of it because they, um, 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 primarily because I've seen these types of programs before on other websites like uh, overstock.com and uh, bedbathandbeyond.com. And those websites will let you drop ship from them, let you resell from them. But as soon as you start to use that membership program, they will shut down your, your membership account. But then you can keep buying with a regular account. So when I first saw Walmart Plus, I actually made a video and kind of explained that and said, I'm a little bit skeptical of this. You know, this could be a problem. Also, I was a little bit worried about tracking numbers when, and deliveries. And when Walmart Plus actually came out, we tested it and it was, it was working for a bit. And then all of a sudden Walmart said, nope, you can't use Walmart Plus for reselling. So we can still use walmart.com. You just can't use the Plus program, um, unfortunately. I'm sure people are getting away with it if you do smaller volume. Um, maybe some people just get lucky and can keep doing it. But for the most part, it's really not great for drop shipping or reselling under that. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about it. I think there are some ways you can kind of get around it, but not really. Um, all right, Spencer says, hey, I'm now dropshipping on Facebook for one week, but got only one sale. Dropshipping on Facebook for one week, but only got one sale because everyone just wants to pick up the item, but I'm dropshipping, so I can't offer that. So I can't get sales. What should I do? Well, Spencer, uh, first, congrats on getting started and congrats on getting your first sale. That's more than most people do. So Big props to you for making it that far. You should definitely uh, feel good about that. Now, this is a problem on Facebook Marketplace that you're going to face. It's very normal, so don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. Facebook Marketplace was traditionally a platform, a marketplace, where people would go on, you would buy something, uh, they would buy something from you, and then you would meet up in person and exchange. So they would hand you the product, and then you would hand them cash. Actually, that's where I bought my one wheel, so... This is, this is my one wheel. Got it a few weeks ago. And that's exactly what I did. I went into Facebook Marketplace, started looking around, 
found someone that was selling this and they had a good price so we negotiated the price a little bit i met up with him in person made sure it worked of course and then we i gave him uh, i paid him on venmo and then he handed me this so traditionally that's the way that facebook marketplace works but now you no longer have to do that now you can offer them shipping so when someone buys it from you they can pay directly on facebook or pay through some other means but primarily directly through pay facebook and then you can ship them the item now the problem here is a lot of customers don't know about that right right they, they are not used to that some of them just come and they want to do the local option um, which we can't do as drop shippers so it's partly about educating consumers also partly about finding the right consumers because there are trust me there's plenty of people out there willing to buy items from you on facebook marketplace and um have the item shipped to them it's becoming more normal people are getting used to it and as they become more used to it then we make more sales on facebook marketplace as drop shippers so really what i'm trying to tell you spencer is stick with it okay keep listing more items i don't know how many items you have listed up but keep listing more items and do some product research to find the items that people want to buy and that people will buy on Facebook Marketplace. So do that and then um, those sales will increase. So speaking of which, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions recently. So I wanted to kind of mention this now. Seems like a good time to do it. So my course, Facebook Marketplace, uh, my Facebook Marketplace dropshipping course called Marketplace Titans. It was open for enrollment a few weeks ago and it's closed for enrollment at this time because this is a coaching program and we're right in the middle of the coaching program about the halfway mark um people keep asking me if they can join late they they can't join you guys can't join uh, you 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 missed the window there uh, i will be opening up later this year i'm not sure when and i'll be talking more about that once that uh once that that uh, relaunch will be happening later so um Raya says set shipping to only shipping and nobody should ask um, unfortunately they still do um yeah that will definitely help but you'll still get people asking you <clears throat> how do you get people to buyers to leave more reviews on facebook just like with any marketplace it is difficult to get buyers to leave you to leave you positive reviews or any reviews for that matter so uh, there is a way on Facebook, um, I know how to do it on the phone, where you go in and you actually request them to leave you a review. It's not like you send them a message and ask them. It's actually something you press, and then it makes it easy for them to leave you a review. So that's what you should do. I'm not 100% sure exactly where it is, uh, but it's on the phone somewhere. Um... Leonard says, what's the listing limit on Facebook? Because I'm scared to list too much. Yeah, so on Facebook, one of the, the huge benefits, one of the reasons it's so great for beginners is because you don't have any set limits by Facebook Marketplace. So I'm not going to tell you you can only list a certain number of items per day. That doesn't exist like it does on eBay. So huge win for Facebook there. Now, when I started doing Facebook Marketplace, I just went kind of crazy i went listing a lot of items every single day didn't have any issues with that other people have reported that they have had issues where if they listed too much too fast facebook will would suddenly take their shipping option away or not let them list more items um so out of an abundance of caution i would tell you don't list up too many items too fast you know pace yourself and um that's kind of out of out of an abundance of caution there uh oh, should be able to see and hear me. Let me scroll down. Um, is Evelyn the only one who can't see and hear me? <laughs> Thanks, Johnny, for the reminder. Let me know, guys, if you can see and if you can hear me. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up or just say you can hear me. All right, let me see. Sean, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, no, we have no uh, set set um, plans yet as to when we're going to open it back up. All right, where did I leave off?
Yeah, like I said, people people will get will um become more trustworthy as time goes on with that. Um Yeah, so so individual results really vary a lot. I mean, there's some people who will start, like set up a store on any marketplace and never actually do anything, and then they don't make any money. And people who put in a lot of time, a lot of work, and really are willing to uh, try new things and really trying, uh, willing to go with the flow and and work with any, work through any problems they have, and they see incredible success. I have students of mine who are making unbelievable amounts, a lot more than I've ever made. So it's, it's incredible to see that. Um, one student posted up their results on Amazon the other day, like millions in the past year on Amazon. Um, yeah, so some people can just do crazy amounts. So it really varies. There's really no average there. Um, we're doing great, Mark. Thanks for asking. How you doing, Mark? Okay. Um, Dave says, do you let all the orders build up and fulfill at a certain time of the day? Or do you process them as they come in? Thanks. So yeah, we, we do them. I have my VAs do them. So I have VA who does it twice a day. Um, but it's pretty much just like around the clock. And that's pretty much the same system I use for, for everywhere I've ever sold. Um, generally don't need to do it as they come in. I don't really see a great need for that. Um, but if you really want to be on top of things, you can do that. Only drawback is if a buyer wants to cancel an order, then you're not going to be able to cancel it for them because you've already fulfilled it. Hey, Mike, thanks for being back. A warning, says Antoine. Okay. Ooh, freight returns. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's kind of frustrating. So generally what I've done, Mike, is I've messaged the buyer and told them the details about the return, told them how the return process will work, when, the, when it's gonna come, and I wait for them to respond. I say, please respond to this message so we know that you received it and you understand. As soon as I get that response, I then send another message and say, you know, Facebook, I'm sorry, uh, eBay requires us to upload a return label but um, we can't, you're not gonna actually use that return label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a return label, don't use it, okay? And then what I do is I upload a return label like from another uh, return um, and just really remind them not to use that one and that to follow the instructions that I sent them. And then I make sure that I actually uh, refund the customer when it's appropriate to do that. Because I don't want the customer then complaining that they didn't get the refund in time, and then eBay complains, and uh, then eBay, you know, get in trouble with eBay. So, and Marius says, "Is there any way to automate putting in tracking numbers from AliExpress to eBay?" Yeah, so there's a few ways to do tracking numbers. You can do them manually, obviously, where you get an email from your supplier with the tracking number, or you log into your supplier's website and get the tracking number and then you can upload it directly to eBay. That's the manual process. There are ways to, to semi-automate that or automate that using a software like TrackerBot. And then I think, I'm not sure if AutoDS has a solution for that, but I know TrackerBot will do that for you. Palm Springs. Um. When listing an item on eBay, what happens if you drop ship an item that is exclusively sold by another seller or company that does not want their item sold by anyone else? Um, yeah, so that's called Vero, V-E-R-O, the Verified Rights Owner Program on on um, eBay. And yeah, you don't want to do that. So luckily the software that we use to list items called AutoDS, it will actually send us a warning if we try to list an item that's a Vero item. So we just avoid those ones. Um, yes, so anyone 
like Lynn, who's in the Facebook Marketplace course, we are doing our third group coaching this Thursday night, and we're going to be talking about product research. Oh, that's interesting. So I'm going to look into this. When when did that happen to you? Because I haven't noticed that. We use the miscellaneous category. So if you excluded a location from the shipping policy and you still got a sale from that state, that means that that policy is not attached to all your listings. So make sure that that policy is the default policy for shipping and that it's attached to all your listings. Actually, I'm going to look into, into this. Let me see what other people say first and then I might jump in my own Facebook and take a look. Uh, with order manage any word out there for a software release like AutoDS to help with order management for Facebook Marketplace? Uh, not yet, Jessica, unfortunately. So this is something that um, would be great. The problem is that there's really no way to integrate with Facebook Marketplace the way that most people use it. So we can't even get in get the orders out. Like it's just it's just not well um, designed for that, unfortunately. So Automatic order fulfilling is just not going to happen anytime soon with Facebook Marketplace the way most people use it. There you go, exactly. Some people just get lucky and some people get unlucky with it. I have a bunch of videos like this. If you wanna go check them out, do a search for them. And you should definitely search um, on my YouTube channel for how to increase your listing limits because I have a great video about this as well. Uh, oh, Miguel says, I will be having my VA directly drop ship onto my Facebook account. What VPN do you recommend? You'll only be doing item listing. I'll be handle, handle order fulfillment until we build trust. Um, I don't know. I'm not. So the VPNs can be very tricky, Miguel, because if you use a commercial one, um, all the websites know about them. So Facebook will know that you're using a VPN, most likely. So y you got to be a little bit careful there. Now, it shouldn't be a problem. Like, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. It shouldn't be a pro problem because what's, you know, Facebook shouldn't care if you're using a VPN. There shouldn't be anything wrong with that. Usually you run into a problem with commercial VPNs when you um, set up accounts. That's when it starts to look suspicious. But if you have an existing account that's been around, you have a lot of history on it, and then you access it with VPN, um, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, I've done that. I've accessed my Facebook account using a VPN when I've been on public Wi-Fi, and I haven't had an issue with that. So... Um, yeah, you know, VPNs can be tricky for that reason. You know, I've seen people try to start eBay accounts and for some reason they were using a VPN when they started it. And then eBay said, nope, that looks suspicious to us. This account is banned. And then they ha I have to tell them, okay, so just start a new one, but don't use a VPN, okay? So the one I use is called Winscribe. That's the one that I generally use. That's when I'm like trying to protect my computer or trying to watch movies on Netflix that are available only in other countries, things like that. But if I was doing anything serious with it like that, you might want to look at something like, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, shoot. IP Burger. It's called IP Burger. And with that, you can get a dedicated VPN. And a dedicated VPN means that only you will have that IP address and no one else. So it's not shared with anyone else. And that we used a lot for eBay with, with great success. And I think it would work for something like this as well. So you could use that VPN uh, to access your Facebook account. And so could the, the virtual assistant as well. And then um, it wouldn't look suspicious to Facebook. Another alternative is a remote login. They could remotely log into your computer. Um, 
that could be another option as well. But I don't know if you want to give them that kind of control. Um, you said once in order to avoid being suspended on eBay, you said don't use API. Does that mean auto DS should be avoided? What are some other ways to get sus avoid getting suspended on eBay? So no, you can use auto DS because they have a non API version, a version that works without using the API system. So when you sign up for auto DS for the first time, uh, for eBay, make sure you select the non API version. So do that and you're not going to be using API. Now, as far as other suspensions, I actually have a video dropping Sunday all about that. So I don't want to get into it right now. Make sure to watch that video Sunday, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And that one, I think you'll find really helpful. Uh, just... Suzanne says, I got a price update from AutoDS. I had to update eBay listing manually. Um, so it, it should be, that should be done automatically. So AutoDS might've sent you an email about it, but if you're, you have it set up with eBay, then it's also being done automatically. But you got this message, a mixture of self-hosted and EPS picks not allowed. Yeah, so, so what you have to do is to fix that, that sometimes becomes an issue with AutoDS if you use collages, I found. So try deleting the any collages. If that doesn't work, then delete all the photos and then re-upload new ones from the supplier's website, uh, like all fresh ones, and that should fix the problem. You can create, you can use your existing, your existing uh, user account with eBay. You don't need a new one. Oh my. Tell us how you really feel, Fart Ninja. <laughs> so, Fart Ninja did not like PayPal. So, I'm not sure why that is, but you know, all the payment processors, none of them are perfect. There are a lot of them out there. They all take fees. It's usually about 3%. And they all have problems but at the end of the day they're making it really easy for us to collect money so it depends fart ninja what you're using paypal for so if you're using it for ebay well ebay is slowly getting rid of paypal anyway so you're going to start using something soon called managed payments and on managed payments ebay will collect the money for you ebay will act as the payment processor so you don't have to deal with paypal if you're using it for another platform like let's say Shopify or Facebook Marketplace. Well, they have built-in payment processors as well. I would go ahead and use those ones instead. Or you can integrate with something like on Shopify, like Stripe. And yeah, there's lots of different options depending on what you're using it for. When's a good time to raise margins on eBay? So on eBay, you can raise margins after you make a couple of sales uh, of a single item, raise the prices of that item, See if you keep selling. If it stops selling, then just raise, then lower them back down. That's it. Or just raise it a little bit and see how the, the market responds to that. The customers respond. Yeah, with eBay, you never want to, just like with Facebook, you never want to list up too many items too fast. Now, the difference is that with eBay, they actually give you a limit. They actually tell you how many items you, you can list per month. Now, you don't want to max it out on the first day, so just list a few of them, and then um, just don't go crazy with it. And just for you environmentalists out there, don't normally drink uh, water from you know plastic bottles like this, but we're in Texas, and there's no uh, drinkable water around, so... Johnny says, smash the like button. <laughs> is eBay better than Facebook Marketplace for scaling? Yeah, so this is something I, I like to talk about. I like to think about like which which marketplace is the best to sell on. Facebook is a market Facebook has a marketplace. There's eBay, which is a marketplace, there's Amazon that's a marketplace, there's Etsy, right? Uh, there's Poshmark, there's Macari. These are all websites that you can log into start selling on there without creating your own website, right? That's what a marketplace is. Now, I love marketplaces. I'm a huge fan and advocate of them because you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole of creating your own website, 
and driving traffic to it, which is a huge process, a lot of money, a lot of time as well. You can start selling where the customers already are on these existing marketplaces. So it's extraordinary. Like people complain about the fees, right? The Amazon fees, the eBay fees, the no one complains about Facebook marketplace fees. They're really low. But yeah, people complain about those fees. But I'm like, they're giving you for such a, a really a relatively really low price access to so many customers. Amazon has done the hard work of getting all these customers to trust them to being known as like the go to e commerce uh, place on the web to buy stuff. And they're letting you sell to those customers for a really low fee. So I think it's totally worth it on eBay. I think it's totally worth it on Amazon. It's definitely worth it on Facebook marketplace where it has a really, really low fees. Um, but in terms of scaling, so yeah. So in terms of scaling, like I said, there are pros and cons to all the marketplaces. So what I love about Facebook marketplace is that it has a really low fees. It's still pretty new. So the competition is low and the demand is high and the margins there are really great. But in terms of scaling, you can scale up to a certain point, but because of the lack of automation, before I mentioned that there's no API connection with Facebook. Now, even without API, you can still find ways to automate stuff. So like on eBay, we've automated a lot without the use of API. And on Facebook Marketplace, we've automated some stuff as well. So we've semi automated the listing process. I, I developed a Chrome extension that does that, which I'll be talking more about in the coming weeks. Um, and that Chrome extension, that's a link to it, um, helps you semi uh, list items. Then we have software like AutoDS for Facebook Marketplace that will send you emails if the item's price changes or the stock level changes. And then you can go on the Facebook and make those changes. Uh, so there is some semi-automation, but really full automation isn't, a, isn't uh, an option for, for most people right now on Facebook Marketplace. So in terms of scaling, then yeah, something like eBay and Amazon would be more scalable because there is the full automation in there. Um, but we hope to change that as much as possible with Facebook. I'm working on some new things with the Chrome extension. So my Chrome extension, I've, I showed it a few weeks ago, talked about it, and it's now in the Chrome store. That's the link to it if you guys wanna check it out. Um, it is a paid Chrome extension. And I'm not showing it again this week because we're adding some even more features into it. And I wanna make sure that all those features are in there because I'm really excited for them. I think it's gonna make the software really good. So I want to show all those features in the next video that I make. So I don't know if that's kind of because I'm more of a perfectionist or whatever it is, but I'm just kind of excited to show you all the features it has. Um, no, so with, with managed payments, you will not have the um, payments right away. And that's because of the delay eBay has in getting you the the payments. It's just the, the new reality of how it is now. So no, um, there's no way to ex expedite that like there is with with uh, Facebook Marketplace. Speaking of my Chrome extension, I guess got a message from one of my somebody on my team who's helping with the Chrome extension. Oh, sweet. I messaged him back. He's working on all these new features and he just sent me a picture of what it's, what it's, look, what it's gonna look like and it looks really cool. So I'm pretty stoked for that. That looks awesome. That looks great. Thank you. Cool. You guys are gonna love it. And yeah, if for any of you wondering, I always have to throw this out there because people always ask, anyone who's currently subscribed to the Chrome extension, you get all the Chrome extension updates for free as well. You could always download the latest version. Uh, yeah, same same sort of problem. Oh, no, no. Yeah, so with Facebook, <clears throat> sorry, I, I didn't read the question properly. So all your belong to us. Okay. Um, yeah, so with face, Facebook, they always delay your payments. So they always delay it until after the item has been delivered. Um, tracking number shows that the item has been delivered. 
and then a few days later they release the money to you with um with uh if you don't upload a tracking number then it takes about 21 days so that's always the case I can see and hear you, I can hear and see you, and see, all good, all right, sweet. Um, yeah, so Laura wants to know about CJ Dropshipping, to dropship on eBay, which is a supplier that you can use to get items mostly from China. And the cool thing about them is that they're really, obviously, dropship friendly, CJ Dropshipping. Now, I've played around with them before in the past. I thought that they were pretty good. Um, some of their, really, they're getting a lot of the items that you'll see on AliExpress anyway. And I found that the prices a lot of times were a little bit more. Um, so, you know, for me, ultimately, I, I stopped drop shipping from China just before New uh, Chinese New Year in 2020. And then the coronavirus came, so like everything was shut down, and I just never really got back into it. Didn't really find it was necessary because I really went a lot more of the wholesale route in 2020, where drop shipping from wholesale suppliers and then drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace using retailers here in the United States. I really like using sellers here in the United States because it gets people their items faster. Um, I find that they have great customer service. Dropshipping from Chinese websites, uh, China definitely works. I see people doing it really well, doing really well with it. It's just not my style. Now there's multiple styles, multiple ways to make money with dropshipping. So don't think that just because I don't do it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. But it's not my strategy. It's not the way that I do it. Uh, all right. Okay, have a pro is there a problem opening a Facebook account and starting selling on Facebook Marketplace right away? Plus, will it be a problem because it's on the same IP as with eBay? So yeah, to answer your first question, you can't start a Facebook account and start selling on Facebook Marketplace with a shipping option right away. It's, it's, Facebook doesn't allow you to do that. There's According to Facebook Marketplace, their rules, there's two criteria that you have to meet in order to unlock the shipping option. Now, if you don't know what the shipping option is, the shipping option is when you list an item and you have the option to offer shipping for that item, meaning that someone will then buy it from you directly through Facebook, pay on Facebook, and then you can ship it to them instead of meeting up in person like I did with my one wheel and handing them the item. So in order to have the shipping option, there needs to be two things. First, you need to have an established Facebook account that's been around. No time period stated by Facebook. They haven't stated how long it has to be, weeks, days, months, they haven't said. Just said uh, an existing Facebook account that's not brand new. And the second thing is that you can't have continuing violation of Facebook's terms of service. That's what they said. So as long as you have those two things, then you should have the shipping option. Primarily, what we see is that people um, have new accounts or newer accounts, and that's why they don't have the shipping option. Or some people have dabbled with Facebook ads in the past. And if you've done Facebook ads in the past and didn't know what you were doing and had your, your ad account banned, then you won't be able to use the shipping option either. So those are really the two reasons why. All right. Let's see what they're saying. Thank you for the stream, San Miguel. My pleasure. Um, how does accepting offers work on Facebook Marketplace? Give me one second. I got to respond to this VA. Sorry. Um, yeah, so what happens is uh, you can turn on 
offers on Facebook Marketplace. And if you turn on offers, then let's say you list like, let's say for instance, this, this guy listed this thing for $800, okay? And I come on and see, yeah, that's really nice. I really want it, but not for 800. So I can send him an offer saying, hey, will you take 750 for it? And then he could accept that. So that's all it is. It gives buyers a chance to offer you less for the item. And then if you accept it, then you receive the payment directly through Facebook and then you can ship the item to them. Uh, should you have multiple backups or eBay stealth accounts if you're doing retail drop shipping? No, um, that's that's not. Give me one second. Just running back to my VA. Um, no, uh, it's not necessary for most people. You know, you really only need a stealth account if you've been banned on eBay. So if you're selling on eBay and you run into an issue with your account, if you're whatever happens you can always start a new account and if you're not allowed to start a new account then worry about stealth accounts most people aren't going to get banned most people don't have to worry about stealth accounts um, i don't know red i didn't see it scrolled up i still don't see it send it again Dropshipping freezing. So, if you're in a country, not every country, um, not every country is going has the shipping option available. Unfortunately, it's only available in certain countries as of right now. So, give me one second. Sorry, guys, I'm talking with the VA about something. <laughs> um, so. If it's not available in your country, unfortunately, it's not available in your country. What you'll have to do instead is just tell people, hey, if you want this item, I'll ship it to you, but you have to pay me off of Facebook for it. Where'd this thing go? Let's see. Do you have to use Zeke Analytics if you want to drop ship on eBay using Walmart? So no, you don't have to. Zeke Analytics is a is a um, product research tool. So with the product research tool, that allows you to uh, quickly find items that are doing really well on eBay, and then you can list those items up for sale. So you don't need the software to do that. You can do that manually. In fact, in my my free training. So if you go in the description of this video, I have a free training for eBay dropshipping. In that training, I show you the manual technique that you can use to do product research. That's the that's like the the backbone of my business. Like that is the exact technique that I still uh, recommend. So you want to figure out what that is? Go watch that video. The free training in the description. Um, you can use then use Zeke Analytics after that to supercharge it, but it's uh, not necessary. Thank you, Kimberly. Great tip from Kimberly. So remember I mentioned before how you can you can request feedback from buyers, right? That option goes away after a while. So make sure you request it sooner rather than later. Thank you, Kimberly. Appreciate it. Uh, wholesale suppliers for eBay for dropshipping in general, check out Inventory Source. It's free to create an account and they have a lot of suppliers in there. Uh, if you're looking to learn how to start drop shipping, watch some more of my videos. Um, best place to get a general overview is again that free training linked up in the description. Check that out. That will get you that will bring you like the first like three or four steps into it. You'll understand what drop shipping is, you'll understand how the systems work, you'll be really far along. Um, and that's up to date, so it's all good info in there. Not as of now. Yeah, so like I said, Zeke Analytics is for product research. So Zeke Analytics is very different than AutoDS. They're both used for eBay dropshipping. Zeke Analytics is for the product research. 
AutoDS will list the items onto eBay for you. If there's a price change or the stock level changes, then that will happen automatically as well uh, using AutoDS. That's what it does. So I really believe that I love Zeke Analytics. Nothing bad to say about it, only great things. I love AutoDS as well. But I believe that when you're starting eBay dropshipping, you need AutoDS. You, you need some sort of automation software, and AutoDS is that. Zeke Analytics can come later. I, I highly recommend you get it because it helps you with product research, but it's not 100% necessary. So I would start with AutoDS, and you can get Zeke later. Oh, that's interesting. I'll have to take a look. I know it used to work. It worked as of a few days ago. So there aren't coaching calls for the eBay or Amazon courses, uh, but there there are groups that I that you can join exclusively where you can ask questions in there, and other students respond. Uh, in, in those groups. Got to watch my videos. <laughs> no, I'm glad I was able to help you out. There are definitely some people doing those automation services who are legit, but I think it, it's way more who are not legit. It's become so saturated with people. If you don't know what these automation services are, let me spend a second talking about this because this would be my, uh, my PSA for the day. So, what I teach on this YouTube channel and in my courses is how to drop ship onto marketplaces. And a lot of times I'm teaching how to do that from other retail websites or from wholesalers. So let me give you some examples. So drop shipping onto eBay from websites like homedepot.com and also from wholesale suppliers. Drop shipping onto Amazon from wholesale suppliers. Drop shipping onto Facebook Marketplace from like Amazon or Walmart or homedepot.com. So that's what I, I'm trying to teach you guys how to do, how to do that yourself, how to create this for yourself. And really, because this model is is so, um, because you don't buy items unless someone buys them from you, you don't have to set up websites, you don't have to pay for marketing, is a very, very, very uh, lower cost to start a business like this. But there are people out there selling these automation services. What are these automation services? Well, these automation services will do that for you but instead of charging you maybe just a few hundred dollars like I do for a course and you know a little bit more for the software that you use, they'll instead charge you twenty or $25,000 to get set up doing it. Now, like I said, there are people who are doing this and are probably doing a great job. Actually, I'm pretty sure there are. Now, I have some friends who are doing it and doing a great job. They're offering these services. And it's not just drop shipping. They're also doing this with like Amazon FBA, for instance, or drop shipping on Walmart, for instance, um, or like more like a Walmart FBA kind of thing. Now, like I said, there's some people who are legit, some people who are doing a great job with it, but there are more, there are more people who are doing a terrible job. I've heard horror stories of people who signed up for the services, paid the 25,000, and then made no money from it. All that money gone for them. And some of these people took out loans to do it. It's just terrible to hear. So my general recommendation is to stay away unless you really trust the person or have really trustworthy advice. Like seriously, every day on Instagram now, I get messages from people saying, hey, we'll, we will do you know, sell on eBay for you, sell on Amazon, sell on uh, Walmart for you automatically. All you got to do is pay this upfront fee. And maybe it's not 25000 Some of them are coming down some of them are like ten thousand or, or five thousand it's still a lot of money and for the most part if you're getting a random message from someone on instagram it's probably not a good idea to sign up um so yeah that's my two cents about it um okay so i missed the second part of this question will it be a problem to start facebook with the same ip as your ebay um so it's no problem. They're completely unrelated. So it's not a problem. What's a good profit margin? It depends on the marketplace. It depends on the marketplace. eBay and Amazon have lower profit margins, 
but you can do uh, higher volume with them. Facebook Marketplace has higher higher margins, but you can't really, like I said, you can't automate it as much. So you d can definitely do volume on there, but it's just harder to automate it. Uh, yeah, answer that. No, unfortunately it's not. You can put it in the listing, but that's all you can do. Yes, yeah, so like I said, for now, stay away from those services um, for the most part, but you can always hire virtual assistants. Uh, the website I like to hire from is onlinejobs.ph, and I do have an affiliate link, but I don't know, I guess I'll throw it in the chat if you want to check it out. That's where I hire all my virtual assistants from. Um, you can check that out. And of course, I've just lost my spot. Thank you, XD Tony. Shoot. Lost my spot. Ah, all right. So I know I'm going to skip a bunch of questions, but I'm sorry about that. All right, I have a video about this on Sunday. Sheesh. Somebody keeps asking the same question a million times. I never answered it. I've watched your video and wanted to get into your Titan team, but accidentally closed the browser because I was using my phone. Uh, you should be getting another email about it, Allie. So just stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah. Do I use Google Analytics? Not for what I do. Not for drop shipping. It's not, not necessary. That's more for Shopify. Ooh, we have Chris here in the Travato 59K. <laughs> What's up, Chris? That's that's a van I used to live in. Now we live in a storyteller overland mode. But fellow van lifers. Van buddies. <laughs> um, I have an eBay business account. The fees are really high. Should I open a new store? I'm not sure what you mean by biz. Like, the fees are the same. It really depends on the store subscription you have. So I would try signing up for a store subscription, like a basic store or higher, and that will lower your fees a bit. I actually have answered this question already. I don't know why I didn't hear it. Maybe you can listen back. What system does Facebook use for money transfer? I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, Ali, just check your email. You should be getting something. Three months is might not be enough. So again, we don't have a set set time period. So three months just might not be enough to have the shipping option. Uh, keep using the account, and hopefully that shipping option will become available to you. Okay. Okay, so give me one second. I have to kick someone off my channel. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Uh, we are planning to go to California. So we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. We, we don't really plan to go anywhere, <laughs> to be honest. We just kind of see where the road takes us. Uh, how can you get the... Yeah, so right now, anyone who joins my eBay dropshipping course, they also get access to the wholesale course as well. 
uh, included for free. And that's really because, you know, I originally made the wholesale course. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on it, a lot of time on it. And my initial, when I was creating, I was like, okay, this is going to be another course. I'll sell it. It's be great. And then as time went on, I really thought, you know what? Like, I just want to, I really feel like I want to give this to my current students for free because eBay dropshipping is changing. It's, you know, in flux and I just feel like they would be really helpful to them. So right now, anyone who joins the eBay dropshipping course will get the wholesale course as well, which teaches you how to drop ship wholesale products onto eBay. And to get that, you should look at the first module, scroll down, and there's going to be info on how to uh, join the wholesale course for free. It's going to be a few months at least. We don't have a, a set date for when that's going to come back. I'm going to make a video about Sprine. Um, I have attempted it. That's all I'll say for now. It's all I'll say for now. Some drama. Definitely some drama when it comes to Walmart. Um... Oh, that's strange. I've never heard of this one. You never got a pin code. So when you sign up for an eBay account, a lot of times they want to verify it's you by texting you a pin code, but you're saying you never got it. Um, try creating a new account. Make sure that phone number is correct when you do it. Um, I can't speak too much about it because I don't. Um, I have done it and it has worked. But is it safe? Is it a good idea? I don't know. All I can say is I've, I've done it and it did work. Yep, absolutely. Gus the bus. Uh, go inside the description of my video. Click on the link for the free eBay training. I explain exactly how I do it in there. And yep. So just so you guys know, like Gus the bus, I'm way behind in the chat. So... I'm just answering, I'm just seeing your question now. So it's not that I'm skipping your question. Do you need a thousand dollars for eBay drop shipping like you do with Facebook Marketplace drop shipping? You don't need exactly that much. It'd be a really good idea to have something like that. Um, what you really need is a credit card. So you'll get orders on eBay or Facebook and especially as a new seller on eBay, they, they will hold your funds until the item has been shown as delivered. Or um, certain, even if it doesn't show as delivered, they'll still release it to you after a time. So what you need is you get to sell on eBay or Facebook. Then you go to your supplier's website, use your credit card to pay for the item. And then when the money's released to you, you use part of that money to pay off the card and you keep the rest as profit. Um, ideally, I would say at least $5,000 in credit to start. That would be a that would give you enough to start with. Um, and you can always ask to increase that later. But you don't necessarily need cash in order to do, start. Um, I would just leave it as it is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with it too much. Are you, are you interested in stocks at all? Would you ever consider releasing a course for it? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I just met a cool guy who, who does day trading and I'm, I'm always very interested in it, but it's, it's not worth my time, to be honest. Uh, if I put time into that, I know it would require a lot of time and that time's better spent with drop shipping because I know it works. I'd rather put time into something for me that I know works. Um, what I can tell you about stocks, it w wouldn't fit inside a course. It'd be way too small. To basically, invest in index funds, low-cost index funds. I use Vanguard for it. That's it. It's that simple. Um, Long-term investments. Don't do. I don't do day trading. Don't do swing trading. Anything like that. Just put money in for the long term in low-cost index funds. Uh, basically, one that mirrors the S&P 500. That's it. Maybe I'll try to uh, uh, play around with, you know, I play around a little bit, 
but usually you get in trouble when you do that. So I have a little bit of cryptocurrency, not very much. And a few individual stocks that I thought would do well, I bought like in March last year and they've done pretty well, but I didn't put a ton in there, so. No problem, thanks for stopping by anyway and saying hey. Um, I don't know the answer to this question. I'm sorry. Van life must be good. Yeah, it's van life for the most part is a lot of fun. Um, you know, I get to see new places all the time. Doesn't come without challenges, but um, mostly all good things about it. Sean. No, it's okay, cool. It's totally cool. I did have to kick one person out, Sean, but not too bad. <laughs> Yeah, you really can't on Facebook. You can request a review if you think it shouldn't have been against the rules. Otherwise, I just leave them. Where are you from? Originally from New York, then um, moved into a camper van full time. Travel around here. Oh, someone doesn't like the video. If you guys don't like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs down button twice so I know you really don't like the video. But if you are enjoying the video, I would appreciate you counteracting the down votes by giving the video a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, guys. So we are coming to the end of the hour. And I need to wrap things up here because I need to go out in one wheel. No, I'm kidding. I should probably will for a few minutes. But... I got to get back to some projects I'm working on. So thanks so much, guys, for checking out this live stream today. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next live stream. Again, we do them every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Texas time, which is where I'm at right now. And I'll see you guys in the next video next week. Bye for now.